everyone. Welcome to the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Sachin Raul, the co-founder and CEO at Blue Heart. How are you? Hey, Jared. I'm doing great. I'm uh, on my way to the US in Mexico. It is humid uh, AF out here, but uh, uh, I'm still excited to, to chat to you today about all things healthcare. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to, uh, to chat with you as well. I think we should dive right into it. I'd love if you could tell the audience a little bit about your background and then we'll go from there. Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, my background, I mean, I studied in London um, from the UK and then basically straight after studying, I, I, I left to South Africa to start a technology company in the agriculture space. Um, didn't know anyone out there. People always ask me, they say, you know, that, okay, why, why South Africa? And I just said, hey, like this opportunity came up. I had a brilliant business partner who I really wanted to work with. Um, so we went out there. It was very different. I'd probably describe it more as a lifestyle type of business, um, which is one of the reasons I left. So we exited, came back to, to the UK. And I guess that was when I really wanted to make sure that the next thing I was working on was kind of the, the one that had the meaning that I could really dedicate the rest of my life to. And, and that just... I, there were a series of fortunate events kind of led to us creating Blue Heart. Now talk us through a little bit about Blue Heart. Kind of give us the, I like to focus on three areas. Give us the, the well, you kind of already gave us a little bit, right? About the why you decided to start it, but the how and the what. Yeah, I mean, I think it's still worth talking about the why. And the, and the why comes less from my professional life and much more from my personal life. Because this is a very personal topic for everyone and myself included. And so, you know, I, I think the, the, the kernel of how Blue Heart came to be was through my own kind of like sad breakup where I met someone who I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And unfortunately, I was, I was planning on going to South Africa and, and they were about to return to the US indefinitely. And, you know, we, we said that, we tried to make it work and we said goodbye at the airport and two weeks later things ended and that was kind of like the onset of my journey with sexual dysfunction understanding sex sexuality and i went through this path of feeling really alone and isolated and what was really kind of comforting through that journey which took me years to get to um was learning that actually like this wasn't a particularly unique scenario and it's something that almost every human being will go through and it and I mean I don't know your love life Jared but like if anyone's been through like heartbreak and sh shit like that sorry for swearing if, <laughs> if we're not allowed to but um it, it's the worst feeling in the world and um I think a lot of families and relationships can break up when they don't need to because we haven't been equipped with the right language and tooling and that was kind of what I discovered through my own personal journey through like a lot of expense and you know luckily I was able to afford the help in, term, in, for, in the form of therapy at the time but I know that the majority of the world would not have that as a, as a viable option for them and that was the that was the big why which was I guess it's just feeling this, this great injustice of how we're taught about sex as children, how we learn about sex as adults, and, and that it doesn't need to be that way. And we can save a lot of people's like heartbreak and loneliness if we just gave them the right information and, and training. And again, I think that's really what therapy is, and that's what Blue Heart is. It's we are teaching you to how to connect with other people and. Uh, very like it's not about sex it's it's about healing relationships and, and how we connect with others and as well as well as yourself um that's very much the why um and then you ask me the what um so that is like what is it that we're doing so blue heart is digital sex therapy um right now we're specifically geared towards a problem called right now it's called sexual desire discrepancy which annoyingly the short term is sdd which sounds a lot like std so we're pretty keen on potentially changing that in the near future but um, in any case it's the most common sexual dysfunction in the world and it's when there is a difference in sex drive in a couple and that creates a lot of friction and can really lead to some quite damaging situations and for people and they can feel really trapped and so we have built kind of the most in-depth digital therapy which doesn't involve a human being so that you can go through the therapy process as you would in therapy 
um, with a person um, at a much lower cost in your like in the privacy of your own home and obviously sex is quite a personal and private issue for a lot of people um, and uh, and you know we are there to support you all the way through that journey um, as and when you need us. Very interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, first thing you notice, you go to your website, beautiful logo, nicely set up. So you have this app, right? Um, so on this app, people can learn all about uh, what exactly? So we kind of break down, I say I break down the app into three distinct areas. Um, one is revolves around communication. So it's teaching you how to talk about these things and you know, I, it's really hard to talk about sex with a partner, let alone a problem around sex. Because because everyone knows if you say there's a problem, then the person thinks, you know, things aren't going well and then they feel bad about themselves. And so we generally try to avoid it. But that also means that we don't solve the problem if you don't talk about it. So given that we know how difficult it is, um, we really help people by providing them with like a real, real guidance and structure to how to talk about this stuff. Um, and in some ways, like, we facilitate those discussions so it doesn't it feels like from a neutral third party as opposed to someone maybe attacking the other person so the first thing is around communication the second thing is around touch um, and this i would say forms the bedrock of the therapy that we provide using a technique called sensate focus and that is all around how to block anxious thoughts when you're in a sexual encounter of some kind so it's very similar to mindfulness in many ways in the sense that we see that the thoughts any thoughts that are coming into your head during sex whether, whether those are positive thoughts like this feels good whether they're neutral thoughts like oh what am i going to make for dinner or whether they're bad thoughts like oh uh, this isn't this doesn't feel very good any type of thought is actually like preventing your body from just reacting naturally to kind of being stimulated so what we do in those exercises is we kind of work from like very basic like activities like just holding hands or or touching your arms or wrists or something like that that people can feel comfortable with because some people can feel very anxious around around sex or, or being naked and things like that and we kind of get gradually more intense over time to to kind of help and train you block out those thoughts and, and have really really enjoyable sexual experiences um, and it's a really common technique used for, for quite a number of years by by therapists and and that's kind of the touch aspect and then finally it's which is education which is kind of teaching you you know, how does your body work? How do you feel about these things? Where have these maybe thoughts and beliefs come from? Can we replace them with, with healthier thoughts and beliefs that are going to lead you to have a better sex life, a better relationship, better happiness with yourself, all this types of things. So uh, education, communication, and, and touch exercises. There, there was an additional question kind of on top of all of that that I did want to ask you, and you and I were talking about this ahead of, the, uh, ahead of this, this recording, right? Uh, was the topic of sexual dysfunction is a is a public health crisis can you elaborate yeah. on that a little bit more yeah so if we think about i guess human life and you know what are the things that actually bring us happiness and it's been you know there's been harvard studies that you know relationships are the things that bring you happiness more so than money etc cetera, etc cetera. and you know if i ask any human being if i ask really ask them you know when were you happy so what makes you happy what's the best source of your happiness they'll generally say their personal relationships. Um, in the same way, if I ask when was the most painful experience you ever had in your life, it's probably going to revolve either around relationships or, or grief, um, bereavement. And at the same time, we have such little investment in services that actually help us in that area of our lives. And so things that not dealing with these types of issues lead to things like loneliness which is as bad like can reduce it can increase your like mortality rate by 25 percent um it's as bad as smoking 12 cigarettes a day so you've got all of that which is like that is damaging your health um and so what we see is if you can help people have better relationships and connectedness it will generally lead to better overall overall well-being happiness and that in this way that will actually like increase to like increase your lifespan in a, in a real tangible way. And so I see it as such a, a kind of huge public health crisis that people haven't yet connected the dots on this, but I think that world is changing. And I think there's kind of waves of initiatives like moving in that direction. I think, you know, we had, I, I think the wave towards mental health has happened uh, to some extent for kind of depression, anxiety, et cetera. It hasn't yet hit kind of in the mainstream with sex yet, but I think, 
it will. And that's why I want Blue Heart to be at the vanguard of that movement um, so that we can see like, Jesus, like why the hell aren't children taught how to have good relationships with people? Like, like it's obviously much more important than algebra. And yet, you know, hey, we teach algebra. We don't teach you how to you know, be a nice person to other people or how to understand your own body. Like to me, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, and it is a massive health problem. And it's one that, you know, I think we really want to change. Enter Blue Heart, right? <laughs> Love that. Awesome. Well, I, I want to thank you so much. We'll, we'll have to have you come on the podcast again at some point. It's always nice to kind of hear where you were at, right? And then several months later down the road or so, because things change so often in the startup world, right? It's, it's great to learn more, but I really appreciate you, uh, appreciate you coming on the podcast for this episode and really look forward to staying in touch with you. No worries, man. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for having me on.